Welcome in to the 4 and 2 Titans Today channel and the Tennessee Titans have killed Matt Ryan. No, that's not an overreaction. Matt Ryan is Dunzos and in Indy and it comes off a Titans defensive beatdown. That is the final nail in the coffin for his short stint so far in Indianapolis. But we're going to get to the latest Titans news and rumors, some acquisitions on the roster, some takeaways from Sunday's win. But if you are enjoying how things are going right now in the volunteer state and you like that the Titans have rattled off five straight wins versus the Colts, then like today's video. I would like this video to have the most number of likes in channel history. We got to get to 358 is the number. So if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up icon. All right, we've got some news to get to here. Let's start on the injury front coming from John Glennon tweeting out the Titans. Ryan Tannehill is in a walking boot on his right foot. You might remember Tannehill, of course, exited Sunday's game. Malik Willis came in for a snap. Tannehill ran out of the blue tent with the cape on, hopped right back in the game. Here he is now, unfortunately, in a walking boot. Does not mean he is done for this upcoming Sunday, but that's definitely not what you want to see early on. So we we will monitor that throughout the week here. All right, Davenport covering the NFL and the Titans tweeting out, Ryan Tannehill is probably the toughest QB in this league I've seen. He gets hit, gets right back up, and keeps going. That's what Jeffrey Simmons said on Ryan Tannehill, and I think Simmons is spot on with this take right now. I mean, to go down, go in the tent, and basically say, I'm here because I don't want to get fined, right? Like Marshawn Lynch, I have to exit the game for a snap because I can't feel my right foot, but come right back in afterwards and hold on for a win against the Colts? Take some guts to do that. Hopefully Ryan Tannehill can go this upcoming Sunday. I don't want to see Malik Willis under these circumstances necessarily, especially with this Titans team finally getting to a bit of a groove. No, the offense did not have all of its kinks worked out, especially in the second half necessarily, coming off the bye. But nevertheless, you don't want to bench your quarterback after a win. That's not when you want to see Malik Willis come in. And you don't want to see it come in after an injury where Tannehill is starting to get into a rhythm a little bit, I think, here. All right, Jordan Schultz, meanwhile, tweeting this out. Free agent offensive tackle Eric Smith is signing with the Titans. His agent Derek Gilmore tells the score. Now, before you all go ahead and search Eric Smith, it'll take you two Google searches. The first one was a murderer from New York in the 90s. Skip past that. That's not this guy. This is Eric Smith, the journeyman tackle, uh, picked a UDFA, I believe, coming out of Virginia. He has a rainbow closet with a whole bunch of different jerseys across the league. He has only appeared in four NFL games in three seasons so far. So this is a practice squad addition, but it might be a sign Robinson showing Titans fans of watch for moves to be made up at the offensive line because that's tend to that tends to be what happens when practice squad moves are made middle, middle of the season. It could be a sign of either an injury that is getting worse or maybe we need to have a changing of the guard. And that brings us to Nicholas Petit Friere. He has not done a solid job filling in for Taylor Luan. That's just the truth of the matter. Dylan Radon's. Also, in my opinion, maybe not where you want him to be at this point. So could these moves reflect what's been a shaky tackle performance the last few weeks? I don't know, Jim. Maybe. Just keep an eye on it. That's all I'm saying here. All right, the Titans, meanwhile, they are riding a four-game win streak. So if you want to make sure that win streak turns into five games, I suggest you click, click, click that sub button. That way, you don't have to have any sort of self-loathing or worrying about jinxing yourself. That way, you can have your whole mind clear come Sunday. Listen, I did my part. I subscribed to that one Titans YouTube video. All right, let's move on to the next segment of today's show. That is takeaways from Sunday's win against the Colts. The secondary played very good, and I mean all caps very good, because they played good enough to get a future Hall of Famer, in my opinion, done in the NFL. Matt Ryan goes down after the Titans secondary shuts him down. 33 for 44, 243 yards, one touchdown, and two interceptions. I know that those numbers may not pop out as like Nathan Peterman, five interceptions and a half numbers, 
But think about it this way. Look at the lens of this. A quarterback threw it 44 times and only got 243 yards. That's not even six yards a completion, an attempt. I mean, this Titan secondary was tested 44 times, and they answered the call and limited Matt Ryan to 243 yards, all right? The MVP of the game, of course, a guy who wasn't even on this team a little over a month ago, Andrew Adams, who had a 76-yard pick six in the first half. I mean, just truly a tone setter for how this defense was going to fare against Matt Ryan and the Colts. Also, it was great to see Amani Hooker come back and join this team in the secondary. Pro Football Focus gave him a coverage grade of 75.3. All right. Terrence Mitchell, meanwhile, he stepped up big because this Titans secondary has had their fair share of injuries, unfortunately, which is sort of par for the course for the Tennessee Titans the last few seasons. But Terrence Mitchell, he definitely stepped up in the back end as well. All right, we got some more takeaways to get to in just a second. But if you haven't already, be sure you go ahead and check out our BetUS deal we have for you, for all people watching. Go to chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code CHAT125. When you do that, they're going to get you a 125% deposit bonus. So what does that mean in layman's terms? Let's say you deposit $100. Well, thanks to BetUS, they'll match that with their own 100 and then tack on an additional $25 because you're coming here from Chat Sports. So head on over, chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code CHAT125. All right, my next Titans takeaway here, the offense, it cannot stall in the red zone. I know Victory Monday is awesome. You don't want a rain cloud over that. But this Titans team still has some improvements to make if they want to hang with the big dogs of the AFC. Because look what Randy Bobandi did today on Sunday. Four field goals, two of them coming in the red zone. Right, you got to be able to extend drives, and make seven points into three points, all right? Look at the red zone offense here. After the early drive for Tennessee, which resulted in a punt from their half of the field, get the ball back not too long later, drive down the field, first down in the red zone, incomplete pass. Second down, two-yard run. Third down, incomplete pass. You just got to have a little bit more creativity and spontaneity there. So that's the first red zone right there, all right? First red zone trip. Second red zone trip looks something like this. Incomplete pass, fall behind the sticks, 30-yard run, and then a five-yard completion. If you're going to throw it on third down, go for the first down, meaning go for the end zone, right? There is nothing more infuriating as a fan than watching your team throw the ball short of the line to gain just to make a chip shot field goal a little bit closer. So overall, my take on the offense, they have to be better in the second half. That's not changing. Even with the win, you got to be able to put up points in the fourth quarter especially, and they've got to be more crisp in the red zone, right? They have got to be able to reward themselves for driving down the field against a Colts defense that I don't think gets enough appreciation, right? I mean, DeForest Buckner and Unique Ngakwe were re wreaking havoc all day yesterday. They have been studs on this defense. When Leonard is healthy, they've got some players like Kenny Moore in the secondary, Stephon Gilmore. So reward this Titans offense that worked hard to get to the red zone by cashing it in for seven points here. All right, let me know. I want to ask this question. Do you have any concern for the offense? Y for yes or N for no? This is one of those looking ahead questions where right now it may not feel like it because you're coming off a win, but is 19 points going to be good enough against the Chiefs or the Bills? Of course not. So they've got to make some adjustments in my mind. All right, my third takeaway for Tennessee, the offense needs more threats. And that brings us to what you're going to hear all week long. Trade rumors, baby. The NFL trade deadline right around the corner. And Robert Woods is just not a wide receiver one for a team that wants to be a legitimate deep threat team, right? Make defenses respect you down the field. Against the Colts, two grabs, 26 yards. And especially with Traylon Burks on IR, you've got to find ways to be productive in the wide receiver room to make Ryan Tannehill's life a little bit easier because, let's call it what it is, he needs some help down the field from his receivers. Austin Hooper, by the way, has been a big trade rumor for the uh, for the Titans. And what does he do? He either 
marginally improves his trade stock. Three grabs, 56 yards. His best game is a Titan, no doubt about it. Or he maybe sticks around in Nashville now that he's getting to a rhythm. We'll find out which one of those two it is. But Titans trade rumors, guys. Make sure you are tapped in here at the channel all week long. Because with the trade deadline, November 1st, that is just over a week away. And players like DJ Moore, Chase Claypool, Nelson Aguilar are on the market. And with the way the Titans wide receiver room is looking, they could use a new face. They could use some change. Robert Woods, even when Traylon Burks was healthy, it's still it's rookie seasons early on. It's really hard to be too judgmental. But this group right here, I don't think is going to cut it if you want to be a legitimate playoff contender. But I think this group right here, plus DJ Moore, could get the job done. Now, it feels like you're going backwards if John Robinson trades away a wide receiver to then draft a receiver only to trade another first-round pick away for a wide receiver, right? At that point, you just probably wish you stuck with A.J. Brown, which they should have done all along, but we can't go back in time and change that. I'm not crazy about Chase Claypool personally. I think he just had one really good rookie season, and since then he's been riding the high of Ben Roethlisberger in that rookie year. Nelson Aguilar is kind of a boomer bust guy. He could get you a touchdown at 120 yards, or he could be shut down to one reception for nine yards. So those are three trade targets to keep an eye on, and I'll let you guys kind of wrap up today's video by picking a wide receiver for me. If you had to trade for one, which one would it be? Now, they're in a very specific order. DJ Moore is going to cost you the most, maybe even a first. Chase Claypool is going to cost you, I think, around a third to a fourth. Aguilar is going to cost you a sixth to a seventh. But the production drop-off drops off after each single player. So let me know which receiver you would go for.